Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Cavity varnish, when applied to dentin, provides a thin membrane of resin that tends to retard or prevent the penetration of an acid from the zinc phosphate cement into the dentin and having an undesirable effect upon the pulp. The cavity varnish can be applied with a wisp of cotton that is placed around a root canal instrument. The cotton can be twisted upon the, the instrument a blunt point is formed. This serves as an applicator then for the carrying of the cavity varnish onto the dentin surface and applying it in a thin layer and at times in multiple layers to be more effective. A cement base provides thermal and under certain conditions chemical insulation for protection of the underlying dentin. Zinc phosphate cement is used most frequently as a cement base. We will demonstrate the mixing of both a primary and secondary consistency for a cement base. The powder and liquid are both proportioned the powder proportioned volumetrically using a measuring stick that has a large as well as a small measuring end. We'll measure first a large cup and a small cup, both of these being tightly packed full of the cement powder. This will help us form the primary consistency. In the mixing of the secondary consistency, we'll place out an additional large cup and a second large cup that will help us attain that secondary consistency. The cement liquid is a mixture of phosphoric acid and water. We swirl the liquid to adequately mix the material and we'll dispense seven drops. This should provide a proper powder liquid ratio in order to bring about our primary and then our secondary consistency. The initial small and large cup are divided into essentially six equal portions. We will be mixing each portion for 15 seconds. Mixing to a uniform consistency, incorporating all of the powder into the liquid. Mixing over a large area on a glass slab that has been cooled. We've reached a 30 second time now. We're mixing our third increment. We'll be mixing a total of a minute and a half to reach the primary consistency. At 45 seconds with our fourth increment now. A minute as we carry in the fifth increment. And at this time, it is well to bring together the material into one mass on the glass slab and test it for consistency. You see that we are indeed short of the consistency that we wish to attain. And that is a consistency that will string from the spatula as the spatula is brought into the mass on the slab, will string up approximately an inch. 
for a minute and a half. Gather the material together and we're nearly at that primary consistency. We'll take a bit more of the powder, mix it into this mass, gather it together, and then we'll set off to the side a portion of that for use of the primary consistency alone. Then we'll take larger amounts of the powder now, bring into the mixed consistency, and develop now a secondary consistency, which will be a thicker putty-like mass of material. This we would like to do in something like two and a half minutes from the beginning of the mix. We're beginning to approach that heavy putty-like consistency as is evident from the rough type of a surface that we get from the spatula running across the mass of material. When we reach this stage, the material is taken and rolled into the dry powder and from this point can be picked up with appropriate instruments and carried to the prepared tooth. The primary consistency being used first to outline the periphery of the cement base and to place into the retention grooves for the cement base and then the application of the less acid, heavy putty-like mix for the main bulk of material and against the deeper denton layers that have been previously coated with cavity varnish. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.